Okay, we now return you to your regularly scheduled interruption. Um, <laughs> next up on our, on our speakers list is Riley O'Neill talking about tabling. Riley is a small business owner. He's a lifelong resident of Riverside, where I live, not too far from my house. Um, he's been, since 04, he's been a moderator for the largest libertarian discussion group in MySpace, about 18,000 members or so, wow. which is about all of them are left on MySpace, I think. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, in high school, class of 2002, so somewhere in there, he found an operated an unofficial social or school website which serves as a fairly uncensored student community site. At a kid, at a boy. Done that myself. Um, he has had four radio podcast interviews, one with Big Sauce Radio in 2007, one with Congressional Coast to Coast in 2007, two with the Voice of Radical Dissent in 2010. This year he's also worked to create a growing chapter of the Riverside County Libertarian Party and by changing from the, the monthly meetings, thank God, and doing tabling to, uh, uh, meeting, prior to the meetings out in downtown Riverside to look for new members. And that's what he's going to be talking about. So without further ado, here's Riley. <laughs> Me, um, today I'd like to talk about actual community outreach. See, we libertarians, we have a culture amongst ourselves, which is a one percenter culture. We One percent of everyone in America is just like us. The other 99 percent love us, though. I mean, that's what we have to convince them. We have to convince them to like us. So um, this last year, I did a bit of an experiment. And thanks to Boomer Shannon, who kind of pushed me on this, we went tabling at Art Walk. Because one of my goals was we wanted Riverside County to become cyclical. We wanted to have regular meetings and not you know, annual meetings. Um, so as we had a monthly meeting, what we would do is we would have Art Walk, which is a special event you know, on the first Thursday of every month. We would do tabling. And what we would do for our tabling is the world's smallest political quiz, which is a fantastic piece of our libertarian propaganda, the absolute best. Um, but what we find is, I didn't know what was going to happen. I didn't know if people were going to be largely, you know, not liking us, or they were going to love us, or going to ignore us. But take a look at this map, everyone. This is just from a few weeks in downtown Riverside. Riverside has a culture of somewhat being considered a conservative place, at least in California. Look at this right here. This is just a random sample. Random sample. Folks, the people we want to recruit are in fact out there. We are not a one percenter club. We have our little one percenter club up here, but this overwhelming bulk are people who are interested in libertarianism. And here's an amazing thing about this test. When you push people on the street, you no longer have to do a cold read. You no longer have to know, are they a leftist? Are they a right winger? Do they even know? You now know some place to start with. So if they're coming up here, you can immediately segue into a conversation where they're going to agree with you, agree with you, agree with you, and now they're interested. So we set this very positive community out, which are people, you know, they're interested in what we're doing, they like us, and if they show up here left liberal, I mean, we have a lot of here, if you listen to Gary, everything he had to say, reaching out to the left, I mean, I'm finding it's becoming very easy to now talk to people saying, hey, look, well, you know, you're against the war, well, it eventually segue and end up here, and I've had a lot of success. I mean, people have been emailing me. People, you know, they come back the next month. Hey, I thought of a question. What do you think of the BP oil spill? And then they hear my spiel on that. So, um, and we have an open policy where I say, any question you have, we'll answer. I mean, how transparent is this? I'm not going to, you know, BS you with a, a vague generality or anything. I'm going to give you a concrete, real answer to whatever is your question. And people respect that. That's our biggest strength as libertarians is that we can answer any question. Uh, given to us by anyone, I mean, even loaded questions. People come with, you know, they load that question up and, you know, um, again. But this is something else I want to be proud of. Look at how few people there are down here. <laughs> <laughs> Look at how few. You know, we're, we're worried, you know, if you read like lourockwell.com and all these other sites, which I love reading, they, we keep you thinking that everyone's a statist. Everyone loves big government. Well, here I am in downtown Riverside, where the government probably employs 70% of the population, and the remaining 30% are businesses that would service those other 70%. And look how few people actually identify as being a statist. You know, culturally, maybe they may be. You know, economically, they may depend on it. I'm not going to hold it against you. If you work for the state to feed your family, by all means, please work for the state. But look at you know how culturally they're all up here. Our work's been done for us, when you really think about it. People are so skeptical of it. Look at how few right-wingers there are. In Riverside <laughs> County, folks, we elect Ken Calvert. 
<laughs> and look at this. Look at how few people are actually identifying when pushed as being a right wing conservative. <clears throat> so, I mean, an amazing. I mean, this is what amazed me is that how f mo many people are libertarian now. How many people want to come to our meeting the next week? Well, that's you know that's a different story. Uh, we're, sometimes we average two, three, four. Uh, we've had a few with five showed up. So I mean, this is pretty good. But folks, I want to tell you as libertarians how positive this is to do for us because one, we're engaging people not knowing what they're interested in. We have to practice on being really pleasant to people. And this is something that, you know, some see as a potential weakness we have that we're unlikable, we're a bunch of, you know, just Republicans who smoke pot or a bunch of corporate apologists. We're not, you know, I, many of the people who even identify as libertarian never even heard of the term. They never even are familiar with the term libertarian. They may say, oh, are you guys like, uh, what's the Lyndon LaRouche or whatever his name was? No, <laughs> not exactly, uh, actually not at all. <laughs> In fact, he's a criminal. Uh, <laughs> But it, it, their first experience is positive. I mean, there's, there's so much political activity going on downtown that I think is negative. I mean, there's multiple, I don't wanna just label them as anarchist chapters, but there are people who, the very act of what they do turns people off. And within our own libertarian community, a lot of activism, not that we do in this room, but, but that goes on and gets publicized, turns the civilian off. We have to realize we're there for the civilian. I'm not doing this for my liberty, I'm doing this for their liberty. Um, so people have to be, we have to be appealing to people, and by doing this, we are. People love us. I mean, I get phone calls from people I've only met once or twice saying, hey, I didn't see you last Thursday. I missed the last few months, but, and when we miss, I get people bugging me. Where were you? I was hoping you'd be there. I want to take your quiz again. I mean, there were people who were taking our quiz three, four times in a row every month. So we have something, and this, by the advocates, um, world's smallest political quiz, the Nolan chart, it's absolutely fantastic because we engage them and now you know what their issues are. I mean, what a, what a great way to approach someone where you already know what's important to them. Um, but the other thing, oh. Uh, I, I've got a question. Oh, you got Can a question? Can you tell us how the test works and what the test is? Oh, okay, I, I figured, uh, I figured everyone in the room would know. Anyway, <laughs> I'll explain this in chart, uh, just so, uh, how it works. There's a score here, it goes up from zero to 100 on economic issues. And as you go up and up, you favor less and less government intervention in an economy. And then up here it goes to up zero to 100 with personal issues, less and less government intervention on personal decision making. So as you come up here, you get points, and as you go up there, you get points. And a libertarian's up here, a, a right-winger, you could say, uh, over here, really, they're more down here, as we know, right wingers. <laughs> uh, a left winger in here, more on here, and then you know you got Stalin, Hitler, and Pol Pot down here. Uh, <laughs> but um, what's amazing is that we actually can explain what it means to be politically anything. I mean, you know, when I was in high school, the explanation I got is, well, a right wingers you know, more conservative about some issues and left-wingers are more liberal about issues. Well, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean anything. Mm -hmm. They say, oh, they're on the spectrum thinking there, there is no constant unity to it. I show people this, I show high schoolers this, now they know what it means to be a right-winger or a left-winger. So, um, that, I mean, that, that's just a fantastic tool. I mean, the, the fact that we're positively educating people, we're getting ourselves out of the community, and we're being accepted by people. I said, this is the biggest libertarian hurdle is being accepted by people. They now think of us in a positive light now. They like us. We've had a uh, Democrat, Bill Hedrick, who came out and he was just walking around at Art Walk. He took our quiz. This guy's running for Congress. And he took our quiz. He's, and he came to the meeting. He, he, he even came to the meeting after the next week, after we invited nice. him. So he showed up somewhere around here, which I would expect, he's a Democrat running for Congress. Um, we've had city councilmen take the test. So now we're being taken seriously. I mean, so, and all it's, the main thing is, it's so easy to do. It's extremely easy to do. I, I would walk to downtown carrying a table in one hand, backpack full of cards, this on a board, and that's all it takes. And, and you know, I'd like to thank, you know, James and Boomer and Chloe and Ken and EJ for helping me and for doing it as well. 